We are never, ever getting back together. Brad Tree leaving and the Calgary Flames mutually parted ways today. And we're going to talk about the initial reaction, the press conference, and who on earth could possibly take over for the former general manager. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmastro, and it is a pleasure and an honor to be here talking to you about another Calgary Flames offseason. And if you're interested in sticking around, make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts. And we're also on YouTube, free 99 across the board. It's a great way to, you know, get some more insight on things and apply some critical thinking as well as stir in some opinions. But make sure you're subscribed and uh, throw a little five-star rating and write a nice little review, if you will. Um, We are here for you, your team, every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, Today, we are going to talk about that initial reaction to the news, as well as the press conference and what's next. Who And what kind of mind do you want to take over this general manager position? Because I don't think Brad Tree Living was a bad general manager. I think that he had um, an excellent ability to connect to the players and really the entire city of Calgary, really. Um, A lot of people were posting today about their experience meeting Brad Tree Living or working in close proximity to him and he was always so thoughtful and welcoming and just a good person and I you know the bar the bar is low all right we get it like life is hard everyone's got a job to do but like the fact that someone who is under so much stress and pressure at all times can remain like calm and kind I don't know I feel like there's you know there's something to that there. But the Flames could have had a worse general manager, okay? Peter Shirelli. How many times have we seen that man be passed around like a cheese board? Now he's in the front office of St. Louis, not touching. Uh, he's kind of like an advisor to the regional manager sort of thing. But it absolutely could have been worse for the Flames. Brad Tree Living, I think, did an excellent job with drafting. You look at Andrew Mangiapane, Oliver Shillington, Dustin Wolf being a late sixth round steal. Uh, it just his ability to just do what he could for players, and he his hand was was forced. Everyone knew that by the midpoint, not even the midpoint of the season. I would say even November, December, early as November, anyways. Things were kind of a little, a little, a little rocky, um, and there were rumors of Sutter wanting to be general manager and not wanting to coach anymore, and Sutter kind of just forced Tree Living to make hard decisions, and they there was no alignment. They they weren't on the same page. They they weren't even on the same bookshelf for God's sakes. Brad wanted the young guys to play. Tree Living said no. I don't, I don't know any of these people. I don't even know their names or numbers. So, um, he Tree Living declined the extension that was offered to him during the season, and we talked about that a bit last week in terms of you know I I don't think anyone can blame him for that. I think that uh, sometimes it's hard to look and think about the future when you are just trying to get through the present, and especially with the, the team that they had this year, right? You wanted them to do more at the deadline. You wanted them to have a successful season considering the summer and roster that Brad had assembled, right? Um, This leaves the door truly wide open. And we're going to talk more about that next uh, in terms of the press conference. I don't love where things could go. Uh, I don't. I don't know enough about uh, Don Maloney to say 
that, oh yeah, like he's going to make the right decisions here. He's going to do what's in the club's best interest versus Daryl Sutter's best interest. And I think th- I am truly happy for Brad Tree Living because he deserves to go somewhere where his, the philosophy is just everyone's on the same page or at least he's listened and his opinion is valued because I that was not the case this season with the Flames and that is so disappointing considering all of the work all of the work Tree Living put in in that Matthew Kachuk deal yes and with Gaudreau as well but with Gaudreau, you know, you roll out the red carpet, you do that. Like, that is that is standard practice. When Matthew Kachuk says, hey, like, I want out, you have to get the best return possible, or at least attempt to, to do something comparable, you know? Um, and that, and that's what he did. And it just, it truly felt like a slap in the face. Um, I, I don't know how tree living feels I, but like I would my feel not even my feelings would be hurt but I would feel as if my work was not appreciated and if there's anything that drives someone out of a workplace it is not feeling appreciated and plus you know Daryl Sutter was in um, Murray's back pocket or Murray was in Sutter's back pocket basically you know they were working together it there was no general manager it was like it wasn't a sandwich there was no level and chain of command we talked about this a lot back at the trade deadline even there was no direction that this team could have gone in with Bradtree living in the position of the general manager simply because the owner and the coach are best friends and you're not going to upset your best friend you're you're not and Daryl Sutter gets what Daryl Sutter wants we literally have an episode (laughs) titled that uh coming up next we are going to talk about the press conference I'm gonna read some quotes and just kind of break down what my my thoughts and of course what else could possibly be coming next Uh, But before we do that, I do want to talk to you about AG1. Um, AG1 is a fantastic uh, supplement that you can take in order to get your gut health under control, get uh, those anti-aging properties in. And of course, you know, it's one scoop in a cup of water every single day. I have a horrible stomach um, and I don't have energy. (laughs) So AG1 is a fantastic addition to my day and it has been for the past year. I really love that it is lifestyle friendly. So it's keto friendly, paleo, vegan, dairy free, and gluten free. You know, it's, you can feel good about consuming it um, and you're not making any moral sacrifices, right? Tons of people are taking some kind of multivitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits that has everything you need to make your health better and get you towards your goals. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It is just one scoop in a cup of water every day That is it. And there's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network today. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. We're going to be talking more and more about Brad Tree Living's departure and what this could possibly mean for the Flames um, as the draft approaches and free agency approaches and the long-term picture. Um, And I think that this is a perfect quote to open this next segment with. Don Maloney got emotional when talking about tree living. He left us for his reasons, 
but we move on. Okay, well, you know what? He probably, that I'm sure we've all had our reasons to leave jobs too. Um, whether that is you get a better offer, you need to take care of your health, you need to find a boss in a better working environment. You know, we all have reasons. Uh, and the Flames confirmed that they did make an offer to Tree Living during training camp. Uh, I didn't realize it was that early in the season. Um, and then I also got a text today. I believe that this was from, I have to pull it up. B basically, it's saying um, Tree Living left because Daryl Sutter, like he knew he couldn't get the job done. It would just be like talking to a wall and you would be unsuccessful regardless. Tree Living told Maloney on Wednesday he wasn't coming back. So the so that was the Flames' final games. That day he watched the morning skate on the bench, which we all kind of saw. That was the writing on the wall. A general manager does not go down to the bench. Um, you know, that that is that is something a little hard to to swallow and kind of not excuse but you know kind of just th there's no other way to look at it really other than that um and this is a thread by the way from uh salem uh valji i meant to credit him before uh, maloney will meet with sutter this week uh and sat in on exit interviews they're not disclosing what the players um and coaching staff said bean doesn't go into why tree living resigned or if there was a disconnect between the coaching staff and management this season there literally was um brad tree living kind of confirmed it himself when he gave a quote saying i want the young guys to play but that is that on the future of Daryl Sutter, uh, Maloney says he's reviewing everything, quote unquote, reviewing everything, management, coaching, players, scouting, and why they underachieved there. And he also didn't endorse a coach. So he didn't endorse Sutter. Maybe I'm cynical. Maybe it's because of the season and my own personal feelings. But when I say I'm reviewing everything uh, to my boss, it's usually like 4.30 on a Friday and I am just filing paperwork. Like I'm not doing anything um, because I don't want to. But I, I don't know. It's just it's really hard for me to sit here and say like things will change just with a new general manager because I don't think that that's the case in the slightest. They basically said that they're they're not rebuilding. Rebuilding is a bad word. Um Bean said, uh, John Bean said <laughs> that he, like, that. like um, he, I'm, oh no, I'm not allowed to say the word rebuild. Uh, when asked if the season will fundamentally change how they run hockey ops, John Bean seemed hesitant at the idea. Mentioned Markstrom and Uyghur as good players to build around. Did he watch Jacob Markstrom play? Does he know how Jacob, how old Jacob Markstrom is? I, like, the, this is a genuine question. Like, no disrespect to Jacob Markstrom, but Jacob Markstrom? Jacob Markstrom, who has one more year left on his contract before entering free agency as, like, a 34-year-old goaltender who had the year that he had. That is the guy you want to build around. Now, I know I know, players aren't retiring at 36, 37 anymore, but Jacob Markstrom. Okay, uh, Maloney says that Brad Tree Living needs a mental break for a bit. If he's available, he'll be on any team's list. Um... You know, I, I think that that is, again, a common theme that we've we've seen in some of these interviews is players talking about how mentally tough this season was. It was hard for these guys. And, you know, I think that that's fair. I don't think, you know, based on what we know and what we've seen, going out and playing and doing what you're doing, doing what happened and living through that is so different as an athlete versus like me as a content creator and you as a fan. It's not like they're living that and they're in the thick of it. And it's not necessarily something that's easy to digest and to swallow. And, you know, I, I even though Maloney isn't saying what the players touched on in exit interviews, 
I don't know. I really don't know what to say other than everyone on this team deserves a break this this summer. I do not blame Markstrom and his girlfriend or fiance rather for being on like the first flight out. First flight back to, to Sweden. Same thing with Tyler Toffoli. Tyler and Kat were out, out. I do not blame any of them. Number one, you enjoy to just a change of scenery. Number two, if there is anything <laughs> we have learned is that sometimes these teams just, they just need to call it, they just need to wrap it up, call it a day because there is nothing more that they can do. And if you spend another second thinking about it, you're going to just worry yourself and you're not going to have any any enjoyment. You're not going to have any sort of enjoyment like I said, you're not going to enjoy your summer. You're not going to be able to, you know, disconnect from the horrible season and just move forward. It's 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 in the past. And this is one of the things Daryl Sutter does. One game at a time. You just, it doesn't, once it's over, it didn't happen. Once it's done, you're off the ice. Okay, great. You're on to the next one. Rest. Rest, relax, read a good book, crack open a beer, do whatever you need to do to decompress, relax, and like truly take care of yourself. Because I think that, you know, there's this notion that players just have to be like so strong and mentally tough and physically tough and superheroes. But at the end of the day, it, this isn't like a nine to five where you can just like disconnect yourself from it. You wake up, you go to go to the rink, the facility to practice. You know, you're doing all this stuff. Like, you're constantly in it. And then to be surrounded by the media, too. I mean, granted, like, it's not like the Toronto scale of things. But also, like, you are you still have to answer for your underperforming. And I do think it's interesting that these uh, exit interviews were a little bit longer than normal. Um, that could just mean a few things, you know. Maybe there were more insightful questions asked. Maybe players wanted to elaborate more. And maybe, I hope they all brought a list. I hope they brought a list and slid it across the table and said, these are the points that I'm here to make. Maybe someone made a PowerPoint. That I, that would be me. I would, I would have made a PowerPoint with like time stamped with evidence, with the pretty charts from like Evolving Wild and Evolving Hockey, like, hockey viz like you would have seen all of that on top of my complaints because there was a, there was just a lot there was a lot that happened this season and I don't think you can just sit there in like a 45 minute meeting and be like yeah great it's all good because it's not <laughs> it is very clearly not all good when your general manager tells you at the end of the season yeah like I'm not coming back sorry you know I think that he has a lot of respect for the players and I'm sure he does for the coaching and everyone else in the organization too. But like at the end of the day, you have to you have to look out for yourself because this organization was just going to throw him under the bus next. They were just going to throw him right underneath it. Basically, just use him as a scapegoat. And that's not fair, especially when you spent um, nine seasons with this team and... <laughs> that's the thanks you get that is the thank you you get is that is that an organization you want to be with your coach not talking to you not not talking to you but not effectively communicating and doing like you could tell him that the sky is blue and it it it, it will be blue and he will tell you something else or you know hey like there's an easier way to get this done no he's not going to do it he's going to do it the way that takes like 40 times longer. Brad Tree Living deserves to work in an organization that just has some respect for him, truly, because I, I can't imagine how frustrated he is. And we're going to talk about some of some potential replacements and, you know, what, what do the Flames need in their front office? Um, and Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Lockdown Flames. Make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss the rest of our off-season breakdown so we can help you through this because this, this is a good time to just talk things through. I think I think this is what we all need at this point, right? Who Who is coming in and taking over Brad Tree Living's role? I don't think that they're, you know, obviously Don Maloney is the interim GM. 
there was he put emphasis on wanting to uh work, build their scouting department more which is great but are you using the same 32 boring coaches that have gotten canned or shifted roles um and are just in hockey at this point to say that they're in hockey there needs to be some sort of analytical minded person driving this team and that is not Daryl Sutter and we are so close to getting general manager Daryl Sutter again and that is not something that I have seen one person have a positive response to um and that's saying a lot considering the Flames fan base it can get divided sometimes, you know, and that that's normal. That is so normal for different, uh, different opinions. <laughs> like, I just, I don't think I've seen one person say anything good about Daryl Sutter's uh, tenure as general manager. I, I don't think he needs to be the general manager and I don't think he needs to be the head coach. Go be an advisor. I, I don't, there are so many brilliant minds out there in hockey uh, whether that be a Kyle Dubas or uh, apparently Theo Epstein looking for a job in hockey now. Like, uh, just someone that is so smart and current and, like, in, in touch, basically. Like, in touch with what's going on and how uh, teams are assembled in 2023-24 uh, would be wonderful. But I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this next step is for the Flames because they very well could just say, Daryl Sutter, you are promoted. You're carrying over the salary. You get what you wanted. And then they are um, calling up someone else to coach, which I think is another interesting aspect that we're going to look at this off season, because what happens, what happens if they do bring in a new coach or is it going to be someone like, uh, not, not Kirk Miller. Oh my God, please no. <laughs> him as a head coach would be a disaster. But, you know, Mitch Love from the AHL team or a guy like Andrew Brunette, like what, what direction does this team want to go in? And this goes, this goes back to the age old question that we've been asking the Flames all season. Which route do you want to take? Where do you want to go? And my, I mean, my biggest thing here is, can this general manager draft? Brad Tree Living had a very strong resume when it came to drafting. And I, I do think it's going to be even more interesting. I meant to mention this earlier, but there are going to be players and staff that leave because Tree Living's gone. Um and, you know, that happens with quite literally any um, any position. I mean, um, when someone in a position of power that took care of you and fostered a good environment, oh, it leaves or there's just like a change that is not a particularly good one. People bounce. They don't want to st- they don't want to sit and have to wonder. And I, I hope that everyone does take care of themselves and finds themselves in the best position because I cannot imagine how stressful this season was. The expectations were through the roof and to fall so short is very, um, it's taxing. And I, there, someone tweeted that, you know, these players need to toughen up. Like, they're not, um, they need to just real, they need to realize that they're not human beings and they're commodities and a business. And I, no, every single person with is a human being within that organization. There are emotions. There are real life factors that play into performance that play into decision-making every single person on a, on the flames payroll has to consider these things when making decisions. And I think it's it's so hard for me to say, like, 
this is who the flames should should hire because xyz when the flames don't even know what direction they're going to or at least they're not publicly saying it do they even know what direction they want to go into and i i hope that by the draft there is some sort of some sort of idea because i mean it's kind of like when the sharks brought in mike greer uh last off season right before the uh before the draft you know he was working with the rangers i believe in terms of scouting so was he able to kind of put that knowledge to the test or is this are the flames going to hire a new general manager and say no like we have our decisions you're just going to be like the front facing like voice um i don't know i don't know it there are that is the theme of this offseason is I don't know. We don't know until it happens. Besides Rattree living, leaving. Like, we all knew that was happening. The, the writing was very clearly written on the wall. Um, but there, there's just so many things that could truly spiral off into, you know, branch off from one decision. And if Daryl Sutter is named general manager, we are going to have... <laughs> We're going to have to really work through this together as, as a collective because him as a head coach is rough enough. But now that he, if he makes decisions and has a title that comes along with making decisions, oh boy, we are, we are in trouble. But we aren't just yet. So why don't we can just <laughs> let out that big sigh and take a deep breath and remember... It is only April 17th, and, you know, if you want to watch Matthew Kachuk play playoff hockey, he will be playing tonight against the Boston Bruins. Um, also, I one, one side note on the Bruins, every single one of their hype videos <laughs> has shown the Flames getting, like, screwed. Um, yesterday, they posted one about uh, goaltending, and it was, or no, it wasn't goaltending. Sorry. It was just like them, like being like, Ooh, yeah. Playoffs start tomorrow. And it was goal scoring. And of course they show Jacob Markstrom and his gorgeous blasty setup. And then they show Dan Vladar, which don't forget Vladar also came from their system. <laughs> and then today they posted a hype video. And like the first clip is Kevin Rooney, who is from the Boston area getting ragdolled and I'm like can I just consume any piece of media <laughs> without being reminded how tough this season was um, you know th there have been plenty of lows but we are also going to talk about the highs as well because there's so much to talk about this offseason here on Locked on Flames and I hope that you stick around and find out and you know you're always more than welcome to chime in and to share your thoughts, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto, and you can follow the show's Twitter feed at LO underscore Flames Pod. Uh, Nick will be back tomorrow, and we're going to probably talk more about, you know, is Kyle Dubas that guy? Is he that guy for this job? Um, well, he still is technically employed, but he, his contract is also coming to an end. So, we're going to have to see what uh, what unfolds. But thank you all so much for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you tomorrow.